nice to see you. Let's turn that thing on. I think Renee probably has something she wants to add too, so I'm going to let her go first. <laughs> Awesome. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to their live community classroom with Michaels. We have our friend Edie Ekman with us today, and we're going to be learning to make these adorable mittens. My name is Renee L. from Your Inspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. Please feel free to drop some drop your questions in the chat, and we'll make sure that Edie answers them. While we're getting ready to kick things off, let us know where you're watching from and if this is your first pair of mittens you're ever making. Over to you, Edie. Okay, great. Hi, nice to see. You. Well, I don't see, I can't see everybody. I can see a few of you and you're all about this big. So I really can't see you, but it's nice to know you're here. How about that? Um, we are going to be making these, what are they called? The hands full crochet mittens. And it, the pattern is written in a bunch of different sizes. I'm going to be showing you the smallest size so we can kind of get through it. But of course you can make any size that you want. Um, as you look at the pattern, and I'm going to switch my camera here, as you look at the pattern, and there's a link in the chat, you'll see that it calls for Karen one pound, which is this ginormous ball of yarn. I'm using the light purple color. Um, you can use any color you want, and you can make a lot of mittens from this one ball of yarn. So um, I think it tells you how many pairs of mittens you can like outfit the whole family with matching mittens. So that's that would be kind of a cool thing to do, I think, um, if you live in a place where you need mittens. The other thing you want to pay attention to is the hook size. You always want to do a gauge swatch. And those of you who have seen me talk, heard me talk before, have heard me talk about gauge. It matters what your gauge is when you're making a mitten because you want it to fit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the gauge calls for 13 half double crochets and 11 rows equals four inches. I will admit that I did not do as big a gauge swatch as I might normally do. I did a little one. It's wide enough, but it's not really tall enough. So here I am. I am always talking about gauge, but I'm kind of cheating. So you can call me out on it if you want to that I didn't do the full gauge swatch. So bad on me, I got lazy. But I do want to show you about counting your gauge. This is a piece of half double crochet. I always want to make a piece that is wider than four inches. It's, if it's telling me that the gauge is 13 half double crochet equals four inches, I want to make sure that I'm not just measuring four inches. If I measure across a piece that's four inches, those edge stitches are going to be just um, distorted a little bit. So I want to measure in the middle. And I have actually taken a ruler and put, uh, I think you can see the pins here. I did this ahead of time. I took a ruler and I put pins at four inches to help you be able to see what we're doing. So you want to do your swatch, lay it flat on the ground, uh, flat on the ground, flat on the table or the ground, not your lap and measure four inches. I usually use a ruler rather than a tape measure because if I use a tape measure, I kind of have to hold both ends down and that's kind of hard to do. So I use this ruler. Let's count and see how many stitches I have between my pins. I'm going to count the right side of my half double crochet. So you can see that the half double crochet is what's there between my thumbs. And I kind of usually count these little two little legs right here. Uh, to help me see where that stitch is. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And hey, lo and behold, I got gauge. But here's the trick. I had to use a different size hook. The pattern calls for that gauge and they used a size 4.5 millimeter hook, a seven. I used an eight millimeter hook. I had done a, a full size gauge swatch before with a 4.5 millimeter hook and it was not the right size. I had to change my hook size. So always use the hook size that you need to get gauge, not the hook size that's in the pattern. Okay, so enough on that. Let's start crocheting. Move my thing around here. So I'm gonna grab my yarn. And as I say, I'm making the smallest size. So I will be working from that um, 
the first size that's in red there where it says cuff with main color. And I don't know why they say main color because it's, it's just the one color. That must be a leftover from another pattern. I'm going to chain 10. I always want to leave at least about a four inch yarn tail because I want to be able to weave that in later. So I'm going to chain 10. Now, this says it's a beginning crochet pattern. That doesn't mean that I'm showing you everything about how to crochet. So if you don't know how to chain, um, you'll have to look up some other resources on how to chain. So I'm going to try to go sort of at a medium rate. So if you know how to chain in single crochet, you'll be fine, but you may not be able to keep up with me entirely. That's fine. I want to be able to get through everything I want to show you in this one hour. Remember, you can always come back and watch the video later. The recording will be available for you. Okay, I'm starting with a slip knot on my hook. I'm going to chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Be sure that those aren't too tight. You want to make sure your foundation chain is not too tight because you're going to be uh, working into that chain and you don't want it to be too tight. All right, then single crochet in the second chain from the hook. The loop on my hook does not count as a stitch. So I skip that first chain. See that V right there? I skip that one and work into the next one. And let me change my view so I can see a little bit better. Here we go. So I'm going to work into the second chain from the hook. I like to work just above the bottom loop here. So when I go into the chain, I've got two loops on top right here. All right. So I'm going to do a single crochet. And I'll single crochet all the way across. So I'm putting the hook in the same place every time when I go into that spot on the chain, I've got one loop below and two loops above. That's the way I like to do it. Sometimes I'll work into the, the back bump of the chain, but not on this project. We're starting with the cuff of the mitten, and we're going to be working this cuff back and forth so we'll be working back and forth like this. So around like this, and then we'll pick up stitches and work the hand part of the mitten, the mitten part of the mitten. All right, so when I have finished that first row, I'm going to count my stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's correct. I chained 10. One of the chains was a turning chain. So now I have nine stitches. I'll turn. Chain one. Now I'm going to start working in the back loop only. So when you look at the top of a single crochet, you see two, two uh, loops here that form a V. See those Vs? There's the front loop and the back loop. And that has nothing to do with the right side and the wrong side. It's just how it is in relation to my body. So I have a front loop and a back loop. I want to work into the back loop only all the way across. I know somebody is already saying, but where do I put my hook in that first stitch? I'll show you on the next row. See, I already anticipated your question because I know somebody is like, I don't know where that goes. So I'm going to work into the back loop only all the way across. And I can tell I'm working into the back loop only because this front loop is still hanging out here. See this little ridge right here? Those are all the front loops that I didn't work into. Let me count my stitches again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. I want to maintain nine stitches throughout the whole at the whole cuff that I'm making. As a matter of fact, one thing you might want to do is put a marker. If you have trouble figuring out where, I'm pulling out my markers here. If you're having trouble figuring out where the first and last stitch of your row is, 
I will put a marker right here. You see that last stitch? I'm gonna go ahead and put a marker here in the first stitch too. This is only if you have trouble keeping track or keeping the same number of stitches. This is just an aid that will help you do that. So those are my nine stitches. I'm going to turn and chain one. I can't work into that chain, but there's the first stitch. It's got a marker in it telling me that's where I need to put that first stitch. So I'm going to move that marker. and put my stitch right in there. Whoops, work in the back loop only, remember. Note to self, back loop only. And then I can remove, I can replace the marker if I want to. I don't do this because I don't need to, but when you're learning, it's a good idea to. All right, back loop only, all the way across. When I get to the end of the row, I will have a marker hanging out in that last stitch saying here, don't forget to put me, put a stitch here. See, there's that marker. I'll work in the back loop only. And then replace the marker. It's a little fiddly when you do it this way, but it really can help. All right, so as I work back and forth in the back loop only, I end up with a ridge. And I end up with a ridge on both sides. And through the magic of TV, if I work really fast, hey, look, this is what it looks like when I do a bunch of rows. See how it looks like ribbing? See how ridged it is? And it's kind of stretchy like this. That's called single crochet rib. All right, so that is where the cuff, now this is a tiny little mitten, so it doesn't go around my wrist, but it would go around a, a small child's wrist. So that's what we're looking for is that stretchy rib, single crochet rib working in the back loop only. Front loop only doesn't give you this ribbing, only back loop only does. And Renee, I do have, oh, look, you already put it in there. I was gonna say, I have a video on how to do this. So if you need a little more instruction, if you don't wanna watch this, you can go back and watch my YouTube video. All right, so there we are on the cuff. And let me pause for a minute and ask Renee if there are any questions I need to answer at this point. Um, none just yet, but question from me, I guess. Why is it that back loop only will create stretchiness, but not front loop only? Yeah, because magic, I don't know. It, <laughs> it creates a different fabric, a really flat fabric when you do front loop only. Oh, interesting. Um, it's, it's just a different stitch. And I don't know, back loop only is what you want when you, when you get this stretchy thing. Um, and then question from a few folks is, how do you determine which is right side and wrong side? Ooh, good question. Okay, so there's not really, this is really reversible. Okay, it's truly reversible, but I put a marker, and I should have mentioned this before. Um, I put a marker when I did the first row. I didn't do it when I was showing you, but when I look at this first row, this foundation row, you see how those stitches are smooth? That's the right side of a single crochet. So sometimes I'll put a marker on the right side just so I can remember later on because on a reversible fabric, you have to choose right side and wrong side, and it can be hard to do. So great question. Thank you for reminding me of that. Okay, so I know this is my right side, and my instructions tell me to work from the beginning until the piece measures four and a half inches. So I get my ruler, and that's about four and a half inches. It tells me to end on a wrong side row. That means end by working a wrong side row. So I worked to here. Do not fasten off. So I haven't fastened off, it's still attached. And then I'm going to fold it together, okay? So um, it says working in back loops only, slip stitch last row and remaining loops of foundation chain together. So see how I have these 
little loops here left over from my foundation chain. I'm going to be crocheting this together. So I'll be crocheting the back loop of this and the remaining loop of that. So go here. Now the pattern doesn't tell me to do this, but I think at this point I need to chain one. I made a note on my pattern that I need to chain one here. So I want to just line that up, work into the back loop of the row that I'm about to work into, and then work into the foundation chain, that free loop right there and slip stitch them. So that's go in and pull a loop through everything. Not a single crochet, but a slip stitch. So going through the back loop, going through that foundation chain, yarn over and pull through everything. I'm gonna do that all the way across. Be careful not to be too tight. There's a tendency to slip stitch tightly and you don't want to do that. You always want to make sure you're making your stitch on the full shank of the hook. You see how there's a throat here? You want to make sure you're going all the way up to the full diameter of the hook. So this is takes a little bit of effort. It's a little bit slow going working into that foundation chain. Remember I told you not to work the foundation chain too tight. If it's too tight, you won't be able to do this. You're gonna end up having to rip it out and start over with a looser foundation chain. Okay, so as I go across here, I'm seaming those together. Here's my last stitch. Last one's a little bit tricky to get to. So now I have a tube. There's my cuff. And the instructions again say don't fasten off because we're just going to keep with the same yarn. It says turn work and proceed as follows. Now, if I were writing this pattern, let me tuck this tail in here. I would not say turn because to me, turn means go this way. I would say rotate it. I'm going to be picking up stitches around the edge, around the top of the tube now that I've turned it sideways. So I'm still connected here. Also, let's make a note that the chain two at the beginning of a round is not going to count as a stitch. That's going to come in. It's going to be important later on. So looking at page two, I'm going to start working in rounds. My first round says chain one. That just gets my hook up to the level of the stitch. Go to the next row. Then single crochet 18 evenly around. Usually that's going to be, um, each of these little bumps is two rows. And usually I find it's going to be one stitch per round, per row. I can even kind of check that and say two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Well, it wasn't quite. So I'm gonna to have to squeeze some in here somewhere else. So let's see how that is. We wanna do it evenly. So I'm going to count one. Two, three, and sometimes they're hard to get into, four, five, six, seven, oops, sometimes I have to back out and try it again, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, whoops. That wasn't good. 14, 15. Oops, I didn't do I didn't do a very good job there because I didn't 
organize it. I'm going to have too, too much space here. So I'm going to go back and pick up at a different rate. I'm not going all the way back. Let's just see. I have, this is where it's good to be able to read your work. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, Well, this is probably the hardest part. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. All right, so I have 18 stitches. Always a good idea to go back and check. Four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Good, okay. Join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. So that chain one didn't count. I'm going to join with a slip stitch in that first stitch. So there's my first round, and that is getting me started on the hand. The second round, is chain two, which doesn't count as a stitch. One, two, that just gets my hook up there. Then one half double crochet in each stitch around. So since this doesn't count as a stitch, that first stitch goes right there in the same place the slip stitch went, okay? Because it doesn't count as a stitch. So I'm going right there in the same place and doing a half double crochet. A half double crochet is yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through everything. We just zip right around here, all the way around. I'm gonna go fast, I hope, because we wanna be able to get all the parts in here. So you're going to do the number of rounds at this point that it tells you to do. For the um, smallest size and the middle size, it says to do repeat the second round another time. And for the largest size, it has you repeat this round two more times. So you're going to do this round either two times or three times, depending on what size you're making. When I get around, it's always a good idea to stop and count your stitches. I'm not going to do that at this point. Here's what it looks like when I'm joining with a slip stitch to the first half double crochet. Remember that that chain does not count as a stitch. So we're going to ignore it and I'm going to work into the top of the half double crochet. If you're not sure about that, just remember that when you are doing your next round, if you do your chain two, and then you put that first stitch into the same place you put the slip stitch, you make that half double crochet, you can use a marker, come back, put it in the top of that stitch. And then when you come back around, that marker is gonna be hanging out going, hey, put, a, put your slip stitch here, okay? So don't be afraid to use markers when you need them to help you find the end and beginning of rounds. I'm gonna pause here for just a minute and let Renee tell me if there's some questions. Um, not a ton. Um... We're all just delightfully learning. <laughs> okay, well, either either everybody is totally confused or I'm doing an awesome job explaining. So it's, it's one or the other. It can't be anywhere in between. All right, so we're going to go around 
however many times. We're going to pretend I've done that. Now we're going to skip right to the thumb gusset. This is going to be a strange looking little piece. Thumb gusset, first round, chain two, then one half double crochet. Oh, wait a minute. In each of the next eight. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's gotten me halfway, almost halfway around. Then two half double crochets in each of the next two half double crochets. So I'm going to put one in the next one. Then another one in that exact same spot. So another one goes there. There's two in one stitch. Put two in the next stitch. We're increasing here for the thumb gusset single, I mean, half double crochet in each stitch around. So those thumb gusset stitches are just right in the middle of the opposite side where our round began. When I come back around, there's that marker hanging out waiting for me. And I'll put my slip stitch right in where that marker is. And look, the yarn I pulled out for it is just running out. Perfect timing. Okay. So I'll put my slip stitch right there and keep going. So I keep going. Ta da! And I do another round, and it looks like this. Can you see that the thumb is starting to grow out like this a little bit? That's where those increases are. I did three rounds of thumb gusset shaping. Let's read our work. There's my first set of increases. See the two stitches and the two stitches? On the next round, I increased, did two stitches without increasing, and then did another increase. And on the third increase round, I have to find it, there I did, there's an increase right there, then I did one, two, three, four, and then I did another increase round, or another pair of increases. So that's what's making it go out like that for the thumb. We're right here on this part of the thumb. If you're making the adult size, there's going to be a fourth round of increases that you do as well. No matter what size you're doing, now we come to the side where it says all sizes. So if you're doing the, any of the first sizes, you do one, two, three, and then skip to here. I'm going to have to be reading this as I go. I sort of had the other part memorized, but now we're heading, heading off into territory I haven't done yet. All right, chain two, one, two, half double crochet in each of the next nine stitches. So here's my first one, right in the same place as before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then, okay, you ready for this? Chain two, one, two, and place a marker in the second stitch. I'm going to place a marker in that second chain right there. We're going to leave it there until it tells us. Skip next six half double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to skip those. And in the next one, I'm going to put a half double crochet. Then half double crochet in each stitch to the end of the round. I've made an opening for my thumb. Well, not for my thumb. My thumb probably won't fit in this little mitten, but for a child, a four-year-old thumb. Do we have any cats joining us tonight? I'm usually teaching cats as well as people. <laughs> Last night I had three cats in my class. Oh, can they crochet too? <laughs> no, apparently you have to have opposable thumbs to crochet. Oh, all. goodness. Yeah. 
Um, Hetty asked, the first thumb will be on the opposite side of the seam. Yes. So the thumb is here's the well, it's not really a seam, but you know, yeah, you had the seam over here and the thumb is going to be over here. The mittens are the same. They're going to be symmetrical. So you're going to make two just like this. So there's not a right and left mitten. Plus what four-year-old is going to wear a right and left mitten anyway, right? <laughs> okay. So we finished the round. Join with a slip stitch. We have this chain two space and there's where we're going to put our thumb later on. The next round is, I've lost my place here, chain two. Then one half double crochet in each of the next nine. So basically, I'm just going to the hole that I made, that chain space that I made. Whoops, I'm running out of yarn here because I had to cut this to make all those different pieces. So give me a sec while I get some more yarn. You won't run out of yarn. You're, you won't end up with an end like this because you'll have a ginormous ball. I have lots of little pieces here. All right, here I am at my chain two space. One half double crochet in each of next two chains. Usually when you're working over a chain space, the default is to work into the space. But in this case, we want to work into the chain. So I will put my hook right into that chain. As a matter of fact, I could put it in the back bump if I wanted to, but I wanna make that stitch right in the chain not in the chain space. I'm leaving that marker there for a reason, which will become clear. Then half double crochet in each stitch to the end of the round. So I'm gonna keep going around. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell where that stitch begins. So I counted backwards because I knew there would be nine stitches. This part's boring to talk about. I mean, I could just be counting. You can watch me crochet, blah, blah. <laughs> Not very interesting. All right, here we go. The next round after this is just going to be a regular round. So I'll join it. You've now established the upper part of the mitten. So you'll work round and round and round, just as we've been doing, until the work after the cuff measures three and a half inches. So working right here, just working round and round and round for however long it says for your size. That is after the cuff. So from this point up, you're gonna work even on that number of stitches, whatever it is for your size. So let's pretend we've done that. Can we pretend that it's a little longer so I don't have to do all that and you don't have to wait for me? We're gonna pretend we're at the top of the mitten and you'll have to use your imagination. Shape top, chain two, one half double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So one, two, three, then half double crochet two together. Now you can see different instructions on half double crochet two together. There are instructions written on page one of your pattern on how to do this. I'm gonna show you two different ways and you can do whichever way you like the best. Let me tuck these tails in here. One way to do it is, this is a half double crochet, yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, then go into the next stitch, pull up a loop. You have four loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all. That is a decrease. 
That's that's probably the way I would do it, but I will show you another way. So as we're reading the pattern, you can see we're right here. It tells you to do that part that's in the brackets four or six times. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of the bracket, one half double crochet in each of the next three. So I'll go one, two, three, and do another half double crochet two together. Another option for half double crochet two together is yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, then yarn over, go in, pull up a loop. So then you have five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all of them. That is another type of half double crochet two together. I would probably do this first one. So you're gonna do that all the way around and you're starting to shape the top of the mitten. The second, you'll end up with 16 stitches. The second round is similar in that you're going to half double crochet in two stitches and half double crochet two together that number of times. And you'll end up with 12, 16 or 18 stitches. For the next two sizes, you do a third round of decreasing. Okay, so you make that top of the mitten round like that. And on the last, um, after the last row, when you round, I should say round, when you have 12 stitches, you'll just draw, you'll cut your yarn just like you would for a hat and weave it around the top and pull it tight to tighten up the top of the mitten. But let's not forget the thumb. I don't want to run out of time and not be able to show you what to do for the thumb. So let's pretend. Can we pretend that we have a mitten like this? Can everybody imagine that? I'm going to try to look at your faces. Let me see if I can see some, some thumbs up or some smiling faces. We're pretending that this is a mitten that we've made. And it's fine. And it looks like a mitten. Because now we're going to come back to the thumb. Remember that marker that we had? There's a reason we had that marker. The reason we had the marker is because that's where we're going to join the yarn, okay? So it tells us to join with a slip stitch at the marker. That just means, I'm gonna, I think I can take the marker out. I think I can find it now. Join with a slip stitch right here. and chain two, one, two. That's not what I would do. I would use a standing half double crochet, but I'll have to show you that some other time. Okay, so join with a slip stitch, chain two, that's not gonna count as a stitch, then one half double crochet in each remaining loop of chain two space, and one half double crochet in each of the next six half double crochets. Now. The way I joined it, I still have a stitch here. So I think that's a little backwards from the way I have it. But basically what it means is that I had a chain two. So I'm going to end up putting two half double crochets here. And I'm going to be, end up putting six. Remember the six that I skipped here? I'm going to end up putting six along there. So there's one. And then I'm going to skip down here, working under both loops, two. Oops, I forgot to work into the first one. That's what's wrong. There's my chain two. I need to work one stitch in the same place that my chain two was. It's a little fiddly at this point. Then skip down here and work in the next six. Those are the six I skipped before. Two three, four, five, six. And then I have one more over here where that chain was. Now I have eight stitches for my thumb. Hopefully that's correct. Join with a slip stitch to the top of that half double crochet. And you have a tiny little thumb because this is a tiny little mitten. 
and you're going to work around just like we have been doing, but just on those eight stitches until the thumb measures whatever it says, but you're going to be measuring from where that marker was. So from where this thumb division is up to where the thumb is and or to the top of the thumb length. And then you'll do another decrease round around at the top, just doing a half double crochet two together around the whole top. So there's just that one decrease round for the top of the mitten. This part is indeed a little bit fiddly. It gets a little easier when it gets a little longer. And then you end up, I don't have a finished mitten, I'm sorry, but you end up with a thing that's shaped like this, right? With a thumb sticking out like, I don't know, a mitten, it looks like this, except purple if you use my yarn, okay? So that is the, the basics of how to make this particular mitten. You're, you're joining, the, the tricky part is where you skip those stitches, so you leave that thumb opening here. And then you just do the decreases across the top and the decreases at the top of the thumb. All right, I wanna stop and let you ask questions so that I can make sure I clarify anything that I didn't explain very well and also get a drink of water. Renee, what have we got? I'll let you take your sip. <laughs> Okay, so some folks said, please re-explain what is done after you fasten off at the top of the mitten. Okay, okay. So if you've ever done a hat, let me, let me get, I'll do this on the, on the thumb, just so I can do it on a few stitches. We're just gonna pretend this is the top of the hat. So I can have a few stitches here. I'm gonna have eight stitches, but you'll have 12 stitches. So you'll have a few more. Once you finish the round and join, this is now, this is not the thumb we're doing. We're pretending this is the top of the mitten. Cut the yarn, leaving a tail. Always leave at least a four inch tail. But for something like this, six or eight inches is going to be better. If you are leaving two inch tails, you are just going to be in trouble because that is not enough to weave in your ends. It's, it's foolish to leave two inch tails. If you're doing that, stop it. All right. So I fasten off so it won't come undone. And then I'm, see how I have these stitches, but there's still a hole there. So that's what the top of your mitten will look like. You'll have a hole. You want to take a tapestry needle. Let me grab one or a yarn needle, whatever you want to call it. You take a yarn needle and you thread that. And you can do it a couple of different ways. I will often just go in and out like this kind of with a running stitch, in and out. I'm not piercing the yarn, I'm going under, under the stitches here. And then I can kind of draw those together, see how it just pulls together, and then tuck my end in on the inside like that, and just draw it together at the top, just like you would for a hat. And if you've never done a hat, that's how you do the top of a hat too. What else do we have? I think we just covered like a bunch of questions in that as well. Someone had asked, why is there a hole at the thumb join? Yeah, so that is a thing that happens just because there is stress going, um, the stitches were going in this direction and this direction. And there's stress right here where you end up, you had that chain. I mean, the chain created a hole, which we're now trying to cover up, but you have stitches going from here and then all of a sudden they're going here. And what I end up doing, you see that hole right there. You also have a yarn tail that was left over from when you joined your thumb yarn. Yet another reason to leave a particularly long tail when you start your thumb 
because I will use that thumb yarn, that thumb end, whatever, to fix that hole. So if I turn it right side, wrong side out, and you see where I had that yarn that started right there? I can take that beginning yarn tail and sew up that hole. So let me see if I can show you. You see how it was going in this direction and now all of a sudden it's kind of going in a different direction. So I'll just do whatever I need to do on the wrong side with my long yarn tail to close that gap. Again, I'm trying not to pierce my yarn. This is a sharper needle than I want to use usually. You see how it just closed that up? Then I would weave in my end um, securely. And these tails are just left over from when I ran out of yarn. So then I'm going to weave in my ends. Let's talk about weaving in ends. It is not enough just to work under your yarn tails. If for some reason you ran into a knot or something in the yarn and you needed to cut the yarn, it is not enough just to crochet over your yarn tails. I bet a bunch of you like to do that where you just think, oh, it's so easy. I'll just, let's see. I've got a tail, I'll just do this, right? That's not sufficient. That is not really going to hide it enough because that can come out. It's not really secure, watch. See me pull it out? What you want to do is you want to use your tapestry needle, your yarn needle, and weave it in multiple directions. So not just where it's easy, like going under the stitches like this, but maybe I go under for a couple of stitches, and then I come back in the other direction for a few stitches. A lot of times I'll go down in a diagonal direction that yarn tail and then come back up in another direction, that yarn tail is not going to come out. Okay, does anybody have trouble with their yarn tails coming out? Tell me in the chat if you've had trouble with the yarn tails coming out. I'm gonna look. Oh yes, okay. And oh yes, are you using two inch tails? Are you working just over your ends? Like my yarn tails don't come out. I don't have a problem with yarn tails coming out because I'm not afraid to weave them in. So, all right. So once you once you hide it, how do you how do you hide the clipped in? Well, this is the wrong side that I'm working on. So I've woven it in. First of all, I don't have to, I can clip it like that. It can show because that's the wrong side. I don't really care if anybody sees it. I mean. You're not gonna see it from the right side because this is the wrong side. You can clip it pretty close if you want to, but it's not going to be seen because you're doing all that work on the wrong side and you want people looking at the right side. And what I told somebody one time in a knitting class, she was all concerned about her yarn, her yarn ends after they were woven in. She said, but you can see them. And I said, but you're looking at the wrong, you, they're on the wrong side. And she said, I know. And I said, well, if you're taking off your sweater, people should be looking at you, not at the wrong side of your sweater, right? It's called the private side of your sweater. So we don't care what it looks like on the inside. We care what it looks like on the, the right side, the public side, okay? So we don't really care if you see a few ends on the wrong side. Good question. Look at it as backstage, really. Right. Okay. If you, okay. If you enter it in a local fair, okay. You can cut it really close to the ends. If you're really going to do that, I'm probably going to separate my plies and weave them in different directions. And that will be totally invisible, but I'm not a state fair knitter. So I have this, let me see if I have time to get on my soapbox. Okay. All right. I'm going to pull out my soapbox. Hang on. Okay, can you see them on my soapbox now? I'll stand up here a little bit. 
I think there's a difference between what I call that we're all on some sort of continuum between the state fair crocheters and the galloping horse crocheters or knitters. Okay, and here's what I mean by that. The state fair people are gonna be the ones who wanna know how to make invisible ends on the wrong side of your fabric. Every stitch is absolutely perfect. There are no mistakes. It is absolutely pristine and good for them. And then there are the galloping horse crocheters who say, well, if it can't be seen by a blind man on a galloping horse at midnight, it's close enough. Okay. And then somewhere there's a nice balance. And I will tell you that sometimes I'm more galloping horse and other times I'm more state fair, but I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't care as long as the structure is good, the fabric is good, it's gonna hold together and it's gonna look great. If you wanna go and look on the inside and see if my tails were unplied and woven in in different directions, you're going to be disappointed because I don't care what you think about that. But if you want to win the prize at the state fair, yes, there are some other things you need to do. That's probably the topic for another class. So now I'm going to get down off my soapbox. Okay. And we can go back to talking about whatever it was we're talking about before. <laughs> that. Thank you for coming to our TED Talk. <laughs> yes, right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, there was a question about would it work to close off without decreasing? Well, you're, you're going to get a, a straight across. So um, you could you could um, seam them together or, you know, single crochet together across the top. But if you don't decrease, you're not going to get that rounded top. You're just going to get a squared off top. Mm -hmm. bit of a boxy mitten <laughs> yeah if that's the look you want sure you, you know this is your mitten you can do anything you want <laughs> there are no crochet police except for when yeah. it comes to gauge except swatches and weaving and ends well no the only crochet police are at the state fair <laughs> where the crochet police are okay <laughs> seriously <laughs> that's where they are <laughs> Oh, man. So, um, and I do teach in some of my other classes, um, I, I do teach a lot of those sort of, sort of more refined techniques. So if somebody takes a class from me, they, you know, there are other things. This is a beginning mitten class. We can't do everything. So um, you can you can find me. I'll go ahead and do my thing. You can find me on my website, which is edieckman.com. And on Instagram and Facebook. I'm Edie Ekman everywhere. I have a YouTube channel and I'm, guess what? Edie Ekman. Um, I even have Pinterest, I think, and I'm Edie Ekman. So you can just find me everywhere. I've written several crochet books by Edie Ekman. So, um, I, you know, I never get confused about who I am. It's just my name. So um, there we go. And I'm happy to stay here and answer questions for another few minutes if you have any. Sure. Um, there was another one asking, can you let us know where you had said to add a chain one, which was not in the pattern? Do you remember what section yes, that was? I do, because I wrote it down on my pattern. It was right before the join seam on the first page of the pattern. Okay. And I would say where it says turn work and proceed as follows. Um, I would say rotate work that that makes more sense to me because it's not turning like you turn at the end of a row it's it's more like you're rotating it um you we we have been working in this direction and you're just whoops you need to see my hands sorry you you have been working in this direction and now you're rotating it and working in this direction okay that makes sense and then um, Hetty also said, thank you. If you want to have a long unfolded cuff, would you turn your work after closing the cuff seam? Um, all right, so a long unfolded cuff. In other words, just straight, like this one looks like it's folded back. So yeah, you could just, you can either, this cuff can, can do this, right? It's, whoops, sorry, I forgot I switched. <laughs> so here's the cuff. You fold it back like this. 
if you, you could either just not fold it back, right? Just leave it just like this and wear it long. Or if you wanted to make it a shorter cuff, you wouldn't chain as many. So instead of doing nine here, you might do seven or something to make it a little narrower if you wanted to. But this one I think is meant to be folded up like this. But of course you don't have to fold it up. You can just wear it like that. And that might be kind of nice because that would slide down inside your, your coat. I live in Virginia. It's not that cold here. We don't wear a lot of mittens lately. <laughs> I was going to say in Canada as a kid, our snowmobile mittens went about that long. So that sounds right. delightful to me. <laughs> right, that, right. All the way down into your cuff, right? Into your coat cuff. Yep. Yep. Okay. okay. Well, um, I think we're all good. Okay. This was, fun. this was really fun. Okay. Um, thank you so much again for all of that or for joining us to all of you. We are starting small with mittens. We can't wait to see y'all at the state fair <laughs> a year from now. Um, <laughs> don't forget to share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag Yarnspo, that's Y-A-R-N-S-P-O. As Edie mentioned, you can find her, Edie Ekman, everywhere on all platforms. Um, tons of great books. Go check her out. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and the recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. All right. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye-bye.